there were some questions, I think, dealing with um, some younger kids that uh, I'm just going to offer a um, an idea for you guys. That's just a nice um, alphabet practice um, activity. And I'm trying to decide if I want to do this under my document camera or not. Um, this is outside of any um, any lesson, right? I don't think this is hiding in any class or anything like that. This is something I just recently did with my student. Um, give some context here. So when kids are learning their alphabet, um, right, we tend to learn it in this very sing-song way. And if you're going through pinwheels, you're learning this sound to letter connection. Um, and we're always kind of bringing it back to the context, right, of either the whole alphabet or then in usage, right, in individual words. The alphabet as a system, though, also serves a lot of purposes, right? It, it's a very organized system of or uh, part of literacy, right? And often um, comes into play in places where we don't always expect it, right? Actually, a lot of things in our lives are alphabetized. Right? We tend to store information, like physically store information in alphabetical orders. On computers, stuff gets stored alphabetically. Um, the way we use dictionaries right, is alphabetical. And sometimes that knowledge can kind of disappear or not always be accessible. And this is especially true for kids uh, with dyslexia or with weak processing, that they don't always organize or hold on to the structure of the alphabet. Um, so it's actually a really good thing to practice, right, over and over and over again. Um, and there's different ways you can do that. I think we've offered some different ideas throughout the past years about chunking the alphabet. Um, this is a fun activity I like to do. And if you have a kid who has weaker processing, this is kind of um, a way that it will show, actually. It tends to become really, like, glaringly kind of this might be very hard for them. Um, but as we know from learning in general, when something is hard, when a skill is hard, it generally means we need to be practicing that skill. Right? Um, okay, so I'm going to switch to my document camera and just show this little activity here. All right, I have a piece of paper. So <clears throat> what I would do, I would have uh, either we can do this in partnership, right, or I'd have my student just write out the whole alphabet. And I'm talking while I'm doing this, but what I would actually have them do is either say the letter names or even say sounds, but probably letter names as they're going through this, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, sorry, O, M, N, O. W, X, Y, Z. That's amazing. My page has 26 lines on it. That's fantastic. That just makes me happy. Um, okay. So uh, we would go through just real quick, right? Let's go through the alphabet. We could sing it. We could say it, whatever it is. And I would remind them how many letters are in the alphabet, right? We have one. I'm not going to number them all, but we have 26 letters, right? So we know that Z is number 26. A is number one. And I'm going to have my student pick a random number between 1 and 26. So, I don't know, Linda, you want to pick a random number between 1 and 26? Eight. Eight. Okay. And we would count, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, eight is H, if I counted that correctly. <clears throat> and we're going to pick a theme. So, I just recently did this with my student around the holidays. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, Christmas was our theme, right? Or holidays was our theme. Um... I don't know what might be a good theme right now. It's springtime, right? So maybe maybe spring is our theme. Spring. <clears throat> and now we each have to think of something that starts with the letter H and fits our theme. So we are doing um, larger processing work here, right? We've started in a, a phonic space, right? So we have the sound of H. H is actually a hard one to start with. Um, 
And we have to then connect to this larger comprehension sense of what do we know about spring, right? What are things that fit in the world of spring that might start with H? This is actually a very high level cognitive like ping pong game that happens. Um, like I said, H is kind of a tricky one to start with <laughs> because it might be a harder letter in terms of starting sounds. <clears throat> but you will see kids who can do this very quickly or have a strong capacity for this and kids who really struggle with this idea. And there's two different reasons why kids might struggle. One is the phonics side of things, right? I just can't think of what sound this makes and I can't then associate it with the word. Right? That could be one space where it kind of falls apart. The other is the abstract thinking side where stuff might fall apart. Right. So I might be able to tell you <clears throat> a bunch of words that start with the letter H. But can I connect them to spring? Can I make this logical connection? Right. So, for example, a word I thought of is the word happy. Right. I don't know. Happy starts with H. Can I make an argument as to why the word happy fits under the category of spring? Right? I might say springtime is when stuff is blooming and it's warm. So it makes me really happy, right? Lots of happiness occurs in springtime, right? And I'm going to be modeling my thinking and thinking aloud through this process as we're talking through it, right? And I would try to come up with a word and I would have my student come up with a word. And you could do this with, you know, if you have four kids, they could all be trying to come up with a word, right? So it scales up and down really easily. And then we're going to pick another number, right, and keep going through this activity. Obviously, there are some letters like X <laughs> and maybe even Z, right? These are kind of star letters that we might not be able to come up with anything for, but we can still stop and think and maybe have just a little bit of brain juice spent on, can we come up with anything, right? And if we decide, no, we got nothing, okay, we'll skip it and we'll move on. Right. Um, yeah, so let me see. Oh, I had a question in the chat while I was talking about this. Should they write in capital letters or does it matter? It doesn't matter. I happen to write in capitals. That's a good question. Um, that was my sort of automatic response was to write in capitals. It does not matter. Um, you could use it as an opportunity to practice whatever handwriting piece you want to practice. Maybe they don't get capital practice very often. So yeah, we're going to write it in capitals. Maybe you're working on even cursive. And I know they wouldn't be connected with each other. But we could still do, I'm going to do my single cursive A and my single cursive B. Right? So any kind of writing practice that you might want to emphasize, right? Or if they're, let's say, maybe they you know have good handwriting work. Um, just however they are comfortable writing it. Okay. So kind of a fun, a fun little activity, um, even for kids who have strong processing, you know, could do this very quickly. It's still a, a fun challenge. 